or you're 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 worried, right? You're saying, gosh, no, it's that's it's too big. Okay, but a priori we don't necessarily know that much about this, except I know two points can be separated, yes? Now, hmm. Uh, in fact, I claim something more is true that not only can P be separated from Q, but I can separate both of them with disjoint open balls of radius half the distance between the two. Would you agree? Yes? Okay. So then what? How do I pass from one point to infinitely many points? What's the problem here if I, so Maya said, oh, take half the distance between P and Q. Maybe I'll do that, I'll take those distances for every point in K and then take their minimum. Well, if there are not finitely many points, then what's the problem with taking the minimum of all those distances? May not, well, if it exists, it might be zero. It, it clearly exists, uh, the minimum doesn't exist, but the infimum exists because it's bounded below by negative numbers, right? But that infima might be zero. So look at this example. Would you agree that if I have a point Q, yeah, I can take a ball of radius half the distance between the two, right? And then I could take the minimum of all those things. But this is a case where, depending on how close Q gets, that minimum might be zero. That infima might be zero, and the minimum may not exist, OK? So, yes, you have an idea. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. So, um, uh, so you so th so it's certainly that the intuition is correct. That is, if you have a point here, and the infimum of all these balls were zero, then p um, uh, p would be a limit point. But we're trying to show that. Uh, so yeah. So then, what would that mean? Suppose p is a limit point. Then what? Right, we're not assuming it's closed. You're trying to show that it's closed. You're trying to show that can't happen. Right? Yeah, so so this this is your ops, your intuition is right, but it's not going to help us show that this set is ultimately closed if it's compact. We need to use compactness somewhere. Right? Okay? But but good intuition. So so help Let's see. Do we have an open cover? Steve. Uh huh. Hmm. Okay. I'm not sure what you mean, but let's let me draw some pictures here. Some more views. Some more colors. Let me hear from somebody I haven't heard from before. Any, any other ideas as to what cover I might use for K? And I've just suggested that instead of just looking at distances from P, you might look at balls around Q. Yes, Patrick? <gasps> what size? Mm. OK. Well, would, would you agree, Patrick, that for any particular point, I have a ball like this that completely misses a ball over here? Yes? Yes? So let's give it a name. How about calling this set that the set around P that misses Q's ball, U sub Q, and the set around Q that misses P's ball, V sub Q? Yes? And you could take this to be half the distance between the two. Of course, depending on the, the, the point, you know, Q, this Q has this ball, this Q has this ball. But this particular Q, let's call it Q prime, 
has a smaller ball, right? So the radius may change depending on the point, yes? Okay, so every, every, for every point, there are partner sets that separate that point from P. Call them U, Q, and V, Q. Julian? Use what as a cover? The set of VQs is a cover. Yes, it is. So what? There's a finite subcover. So what? So we're here at this point. Would you agree? We're just following our nose. Not sure exactly where this is going. Yes. But Mara is thinking when I have a finite subcover, I have a finite number of these balls. And Jingjing Jing is smiling because she may have some insight here too. Yeah, you could take the ball of balls over here. There are finally many balls here. Finally many balls here. Partners, yes. You could take the one of minimum distance. Why does that minimum have to be bigger than zero? Why does it have to exist? There are now finitely many distances you're talking about. Why does it have to be bigger than zero? Because it, it was bigger than zero to begin with. All these numbers were bigger than zero, yes? And now we've used finiteness, right? We, we basically have finiteness where we didn't have it before. That's what I mean when I say compact sets are you know, next best thing to being finite, right? We're, we're actually appealing to finiteness here. OK, so let's write that down. We're in really good shape here. So proof, just put this down carefully. So uh, we'll, we'll take a P and K, we'll consider, OK, let K be compact. And we'll let P not in K, we'll consider P not in K. And we want to show, we'll show P is not a, well, P has an open ball around it. That's probably a better way to say it, right? So it's not a limit point or has an open ball around it. P has a neighborhood uh, uh, that does not intersect K. Not intersecting that's the same as showing P is not a limit point of K, which would also show you know, any point that's not in it is not a limit point, so K contains all its limit points. Or it's the same as showing that the complement of K is open. Either way, would you agree we're done if we can do this? Yes? OK. Oh, I might as well put this. So P is interior to K complement. Okay, so K complement is open. This is true for all P, and K complement is open. Okay, so what did we say? Well, for any Q in K, and notice that when I, the, here's the intuition. Now I'm writing up the proof. I don't need to give the motivation. I just need to start saying what these sets are. So for every point Q in K, we're going to let V sub Q be a ball, a neighborhood, of radius what? Yeah, I'll, I'll just write r over 2 first, and then I'll tell people what r is, around p. I'll let u of q be n sub r over 2 around, or do I have this backwards? This one's around q. Uh, this one's around p, according to the diagram, where R is the distance from P to Q. Okay, this is the key uh, sets. And then what we'll notice is what? The V sub Q, I think this was Julian's insight, the V sub Q or what? Cover, they're an open cover of K. So, by compact.